Hey everybody, this is Ryan Taylor from Sacred Rhythms and Do You Speak Drum? And we have our very, very first guest, an amazing hand drummer, uh, Krista Holland is here. She has decided to take a few minutes out of her day to spend the evening with us. And I'm honored and thankful for that. So Krista, I've got to tell you, um, actually it's kind of an ironic story. The way that I found you was I was looking for tried to make sure that the name that I used for my for my adventure wasn't already taken. And I was typing in sacred for them, sacred rhythms, drumming, sacred healing, drumming. And I came across yours and I was like, okay, sacred drum, that's kind it's kind of similar, but it's it's under the same umbrella, what we do. And I did a little more research and saw your work and your travels and the uh, amazing events and retreats and classes that you're putting together not only here in the States, but uh, around the world. I think you do a lot of work in the Middle East, if I'm not mistaken. Not yet. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, tell us, tell us where you've been and what you're doing and just the whole gamut, if you would. Well, thank you, Ryan. It's such sure. a great to meet you and to, yeah, connect in this world of drumming and percussion and rhythm and music. And yes, I have been on this drumming journey for many years, decades even, and it's quite an adventure, as you say, and it's quite a journey. It can really take us some amazing places, and it has taken me some really amazing places, both in the world and also inside of myself. Yeah, so yeah, the drumming journey. Absolutely. So when did you start? How did you get started? Um, what other types of percussion do you do? Like for me, it started out, um, I just recently turned 51 about a week and a half ago. And I started actually playing when I was about, oh gosh, probably nine or 10 years old. And it was on the kit. And it was um, bands like Deep Purple and, and Fog Hat and Rush, I'm going back. But the one band that really got to me, Krista, to be honest with you, was this little punk band out of LA called Missing Persons. And their drummer, Terry Bozio, if you're not familiar with his work, is an amazing polyrhythmic, uh, he's a machine, he's a beast. So that is where I started. So please share with us where you started and how long you've been doing it and just whatever you want to give us this evening. Wow, yeah, I have been following really the path of music since I was really little. And I grew up with a mom who was really a music connoisseur. So I was exposed to a lot of live music as a kid and wanted and, you know, was looking actually to pursue some type of an instrument. And I actually ended up starting on the dulcimer, which is this kind of like little stream stringed yeah. folk instrument. And I was skateboarding home one day being the California girl that I was at the time and I crashed and broke it. And so I was like, okay, forget that. <laughs> and the next thing I knew, um, I started really kind of tuning into drumming and rhythm and it kind of just one thing led to the next and it was actually a situation where I got behind a kit, a drum set one day and um, someone came in the room as I was just banging away, not knowing what I was doing. And it was actually a boyfriend of mine at the time and he was like, what are you doing on my set? And <laughs> second of all, I was yeah. don't stop drumming and it was yeah. like somehow that statement don't stop drumming just kind of planted itself as a seed inside mm -hmm. of me and so i started really tuning into the rhythmic section and just i was like okay drumming yeah that might be something and it just was a very serendipitous thing i kept really just being led to different aspects of drumming and i found my first teacher who was babatunde olatunji a um, African sure. drum drummer. and so I was like I'm gonna go study with him and I did and you know at the and when I first got there they were like oh you're here for the dancing right because it was gorgeous African dancing and I was like no I really want to drum and so they you know kind of let me in on the drumming and that also just led to Middle Eastern drumming and I just kept pursuing it and I was also kind of questioning myself like First of all, a drum set, as you know, so many pieces, the hi-hat, the bass drum, you have to have like a truck or a big car to actually mm -hmm. move it around. It's kind of an albatross. It's mm -hmm. just a lot of equipment with, you know, sure. breaking it down all the time. It's super loud. Your neighbors hate you when you're just yeah. getting started. 
on it. So I was like, yeah, this is a lot, but I pursued it. I had this amazing Cuban drum set teacher and I was you know, doing that path. And one day I walked into a store in California and on the flyer board, it said, when the drummers were women, and it really stopped me because I had actually always really associated drumming very specifically with like a masculine kind of expression, which I loved, you know, I love the masculine expression and I felt like um, it was really fun to play in that realm and to be kind of in this really powerful, I don't know, there was just something about it that was really like primal and powerful and um, that solid groove but when I saw that flyer it sparked my interest so much that I ended up going to that weekend and that's when I met the frame drum mm -hmm. which was what the woman who became my teacher uh, the late Lane Redmond yes, she had written a book called when the mm -hmm. drummers were women yep. and when I went to that weekend and I started seeing these ancient images of women holding these frame drums from all over the world, I was so, first of all, amazed and I was struck by it. And I felt like perhaps this is why I have been following the drum. And regardless of how I got here, I am definitely in the right place and I'm going to continue this. And so I started delving really deeply into the history and the ancient mythology and the stories and the lore and it opened up this whole world and this really a worldview of how we have been in rhythm since the ancient days really sure. cross culturally and it is a polycultural um, instrument the frame drum specifically but drumming in general is really part of our global human history. Absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> That's a beautiful story. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing that. I think, you know, uh, mine started with, like I said, with the whole, the, the punk pop rock scene, uh, went into, you know, I sometimes like my, my music, my metal a little hard on the hard end. So <laughs> bands like Pantera and Sepultura and things like that, which really challenge your, um, abilities when it comes to all four limbs because you have the double bass going and you have eighth notes on the ride and and you know four four on the back end on the snare so i did that for probably 20 years and i still do but what got me into kind of the same as you what got me into what i call indigenous drumming was um believe it or not was my first trip down to port au prince haiti i went down there back in 2004 and uh, was supporting a, a friend of mine who was going through some Haitian traditions and cultures and ritual and things like that. And they have a ceremony called a fet, which means it's like a feast. And you have all these drummers on a riser. And then you have the participants that are down singing and dancing and things like that. And the people who were uh, hosting me, she was like, you're a drummer, right? And I said, yeah, you know, to a degree. And so she didn't have me play with it. She put me right next to the Haitian drummers and said, just watch. And at first I was thinking, okay, this is kind of like a drum circle session where guys just kind of ad lib and whatnot. And as I sat in more with them, I realized that each drum and each different right is a very intricate rhythm that has to mold with the other rhythms in the battery. And it's extremely difficult. Um, so I've been doing the Afro Haitian drumming for about, well, yeah, 20 years now. And it was the same thing for me, sitting in with indigenous elders. I spent some time in Africa, uh, spent more time down in Haiti and the Dominican Republic, and then out in Red Bud, South Dakota, and spending time with the Lakota out there and just kind of merged all three in. And the same same thing with you. Every time I get into these polyrhythms or just even playing here at home, there are images and messages and the things that are coming from the outer beyond, if you want to call it that, from another source, you know, because you are tapping in. And that's kind of where I got the title for the, the the venture I'm doing, Do You Speak Drum? Because to me, everybody speaks that language. It doesn't matter. A prime example was I just did a Radha Krishna service up in uh, here in the suburbs in Dallas, had 150 people. Most of them were Indian. A lot of them didn't speak any English. But once we got into like that 144 groove, it was beautiful. Everybody knew where they were going. So 
the work that I do and the work that you do is um, undervalued a lot of times and it, it is so medicinal and there's so much power in it. And I want to hear like from you how it's how it's developed you as a drummer, how it's developed you say internally and how it's developed you on the business side of things, because even though we're doing what we love to do, we still have to maintain a business to some level. So how is that in all three of those flourished and blossomed to where you are today? Well, I think this idea of how drumming transforms us, like your stories of be about being down in uh, Haiti and how really sophisticated those rhythms are and the complexity of that polyrhythmic groove, especially when two or more are gathered and there's this, you know, incredible language. It's like, do you speak drum? Well, the drum is the mother tongue. Yeah. I mean, some anthropologists even surmise that we drummed before we spoke and certainly music has been so key in our evolutionary advantage really I mean there's also theories that it was because of our music that gave us an evolutionary advantage over other like Neanderthals perhaps and things because the music and the rhythm were organizing us and rhythm is an organizing principle. And when you talk about how when you drum, you know, you go on a journey, so to speak, I don't know your exact words, but it's really about how drumming can transform the mind, like specifically the brain waves, right? So different rhythmic time signatures at different speeds and tempos affect the brain waves. Absolutely. And we could, you know, use different words for that, like trance, which I think sometimes that word can, you know, can be misconstrued that you're like, you're in a trance. So we can think of it as the flow state or the zone, though the trance actually also in anthropological studies, like 90 something percent of cultures have some type of trance, right? Or ritual. It could be running for miles it could be fasting it could be an all-night vigil it could be rosary or prayer I mean there's many different things that create a transformation of consciousness or a shift in our brain waves and that's what a lot of us are drawn to I think humans in general we're drawn to that flow state of mind and the zone because it takes us out of the everyday minutia of the stressful thinking or right. the repetition of thoughts so things that do repeat like drumming and they take us into a flow state we can drop down into different aspects of being or we can move up into different brainwave frequencies where we have intuitive or creative insight mm -hmm. and also that zone feeling or being in the flow it's something that can be very satisfying, right? So we're in the flow state and we're drumming. And in a sense, it's like, wow, it, we're not really like doing much in the sense, I mean, sure, complex rhythm and drumming can be very mathematical. It can really like be a brain optimization where you're having to really focus on how the rhythmic structure is built or it changes or there's a complexity like in classical Indian music as mm -hmm. I'm sure you're aware like it's so complex it's so deeply developed and it can really work with that cognitive calisthenics right mm -hmm. so our brains are just being worked but at the same time we can get into an intuitive creative flow state where we are outside of the grind of the minutia of thinking so those ways that we play and how the drumming can transform and the drumming and the rhythms can, can transform us individually and also collectively in groups and then on the, the business end you know that's a whole journey in itself and part of my inspiration is how we can live a creative life and it's really about having a life that um, enhances life force and enhances the positive regard between people and 
music being the universal language. So there's cross-cultural exchange happening. Absolutely. And we, we want to be respectful that there are indigenous cultures that it might be that they are retaining those cultural traditions in a way where we might have to get permission in certain aspects. And I think it's really important that we honor those different traditions. But in the traditions that I've studied with drumming, there has been this incredible open source cross-cultural exchange. Mm -hmm. These rhythms that have been passed down from my teachers and my teachers' teachers. And we don't even know where they originated because it was an oral tradition to start. So it was ear to mouth, mouth to ear, drum to ear, and it wasn't written down or right. notated. And now we're doing all this notation and things like that. And in the Sacred Drumming Academy, which is my main, um, you know, source of livelihood, I'm also a polymath, so there's other multiple streams of income, but in the academy, we're approaching it from all these different angles, really as like a mandala of practice where we are working intuitively, but we're also working with compositions that are notated and that you can study and you can repeat we're looking and learning the traditional rhythms and learning a bit about the tradition. Where does this come from? Where is it most predominantly played? Are there any stories of the culture mm -hmm. that are connected to those rhythms? And what are some of the myths that are connected to the drum in that, in that rhythm or in that culture or tradition? And then also, what is the art of practice? and the art of practice and the discipline and the devotion, it's also something that can really um, create like a, it develops some muscle for people that do want to also extend this out to their communities. For instance, if someone is wanting to play the drum for the musicality and perhaps be in a circle or in some kind of um, ensemble, they can work with that and having th that skill of the discipline and the devotion. It also teaches us the structure of rhythm to work rhythmically in the cycles of the year, for instance. Mm -hmm. And so in a sense with what I'm doing, there is really that kind of this blend because it's, it's a lifestyle in a sense and how can we take something that is our creative offering our art and have it be inspiring and replenishing to ourselves so that we have that energy to share and to really be solo preneurs right because mm -hmm. that's a journey in itself so mm -hmm. i feel like the drum informs that work and it is a body of work um sacred drumming frame drumming and there are many different really aspects to to the work itself i think it's beautiful now um let me ask you real quick just off the top of your head i like to do a thing with with everyone i speak with called uh, first thought no thought so i'm going to ask you a question and you don't have time to think just give it to me are you ready Okay. <laughs> what is your favorite rhythm? Polyrhythm. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. Good answer. You were talking about trance a little bit, and um, I'm not, in all honesty, I'm not real familiar with the frame drum. I played around with it a little bit, and I've watched you, and and of course, Marta Lee, and Glenn Valdez, and Lane, and, and you know, all of the masters at it, and I've always found myself to be a sit-down drummer. You know, I have all the congas and the djembe's and the, and the boogaraboos, and I have some hasten drums in the corner that are out of shot. But um, I feel like every every drum that there is on the planet, regardless of where it's from, if it's from the Kati Katanga, if it's from ancient Greece, if it's from Siberia, if it's from the Native American culture, that membrana phone is meant to take the psyche into a trance at various levels. Um, and in different parts of the world that I've been to, when they get into these, these rituals, you know, the trances are very intense because of the constant rhythm that is just driving home that energy into uh, 
and, and, to, and to the the head chakra, the crown, the Sahasrara, you know, if you will, it opens up both frontal lobes and it kind of makes room for whatever energy with permission, of course, and with pure intention to come in and drive that force as it needs to be driven. So when you're doing your work and I, I see that you've done a lot of retreats and you work with a lot of uh, people at different playing levels, I'm sure. Do you have at your retreats, those rituals? And if so, have you had people go into trance where they're doing the, the whirling dervish and they're just letting it out and they're screaming and crying in front of the fire and dancing and laughing and things like that? Have you experienced that? Well, you know, I think the, the approach that I'm taking right now, it's more, how do I say? Um, I think that there's a place for that. And I think that mm -hmm. there's a protocol and a cultural context and so I sort of respect that as its own category and the elders, um, the lineage, the traditions, the protocol, how you would set that up. What I'm doing is really taking people on a journey of the practicum and the technique and then these traditional rhythms and you know, there might be some light kind of flow states and things happening, but I think I'm not setting it up in a sense for people to go into like altered states of consciousness sure. or do any kinds of like catharsis or something like that. Um, that's not really what I'm kind of facilitating. What I'm facilitating is more the storytelling and the myth and this brain optimization. It's like, honoring these ancient roots and then bringing it into this present moment awareness and the zeitgeist of even the science and some of the research where we can just look into the possibilities of how it's changing brain states Absolutely. and then it's also there's really a choice point for people because you can kind of have a Trans you can have a deep transformation of consciousness, but I feel like there's also part of the protocol is for people to stay very grounded and really present in, you know, their surroundings. And I think if someone will say is going to take people into some of those deeper, we could almost say shamanic states, then I think that that is a long term apprenticeship. And I mm -hmm. feel like it's also to have council and elders and different protocols in place so that's not my intention at this point in my uh, facilitation and my own practice i am interested in it for again yeah the flow the zone super interested in brain optimization and cognitive calisthenics and how we can work perhaps with neurogenesis and the neuroscience where there's possibilities and we don't so we don't need to give guarantees because it's not like do this and that's going to happen right. it's more about testing out these theories that are being proposed such as if we drum at this particular tempo it has a tendency to bring people into a theta brainwave which we could say is a meditative or a contemplative brainwave. So just to kind of, you know, bring that into more of a succinct, it's like there's the shamanic, the deep trance, that's got a lot of protocol. It's to do with lineage and tradition, and it's to do with eldership and that. And then there's this other kind of category over here where it's testing out theories with your intention for brain optimization and yeah there is trance involved or flow state we could say just as if you were riding a bike for a long time and that rhythmic kind of pedaling uh, got you into a creative mind state so i think it's really about intention and how a facilitator is holding intention and also how deep do we know the facilitator and what kind of relationship is it a mentorship is it a long term apprenticeship do we have the depth of time behind us those are kind of the questions that i'm really interested in 
for modern peoples mm -hmm. as we interface with ancient practice. Yeah, I think I saw on your uh, somewhere on your website or YouTube channel the tagline, and I love how you said it: "Ancient medicine for a modern world." And it's just it's so fascinating to see that here in the West, you know, if you follow like Christine Stevens and Barry Bittman and Arthur Hall and, you know, these guys that are masters at their profession, they're incorporating, and I'm, they know that they're incorporating a very indigenous and ancient medicine to the modernity of the people. And they're saying, hey, this is a practice that works. And it's not, you know, nothing is guaranteed, but it's a practice that's been working for millennia and millennia. Why not try this? So they take it into you know, CCRC centers and memory care centers and cancer centers, some of the populations I work with here in the Dallas area. And there is some legitimacy behind it because at least for me, and I love that we're talking because, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday and she says, well, you do drum circles, right? And I said, yeah, but the word drum circle is such a large gamut. There's so many types under that umbrella. Um, maybe lose my train of thought. So, you know, we're, we're speaking of, of drumming and things like that and how you use it and how I use it are similar, but also different in that respect. And I find that fascinating that you can take an instrument like this, you know, that people think, oh, you know, it's just a piece of wood with skin on it, but it has such a rich culture and there's so many stories behind it. And so many, like you said, elderships behind it. And as you were saying, some of the people I sat in with in Africa and Haiti were elders and they taught us various rhythms for certain ritual, but they were only to be used at certain times and with permission and with permission to the people. Um, so I love that. It, it just really fires me up. The work that you and I are doing is similar, but it also has two different stories behind it. You could put you and I together as say a retreat or a workshop and have two completely different ideologies, but it's the same end result. And for me, it's, for me, it's about people finding peace and balance and harmony. It's about people realizing that, we should honor everyone's divine uniqueness, but understand that we're all together. We're a part of the same fabric, as the, as the Hopi say, we're a part of the same fabric. And if that fabric begins to rip, everything comes apart. And right now we're in a time when that fabric is a little frayed and people like yourself and myself and, and everybody in the world just needs to grab an instrument of some type, find their tempo, find their rhythm. And as you mentioned earlier, shut down that monkey brain and let intention and let the universe come in and guide us to where what our mission is i wanted to ask you are you familiar with a, a culture out of africa called um the dagara um i'm not familiar mm -mm. okay so they have there was a uh, a great master who passed away maybe two years ago his name was maladoma some mm -hmm. and um Definitely of, familiar. yes yes I, I, okay I so he he, he teaches he taught in the Dagra cosmology, they have a life of harmony and balance using elements, but they have five elements. There's fire, water, earth, mineral, and nature. And what really floored me is that every one of those elements has its own drum rhythm. And when you start to play that rhythm, you begin to find your life's purpose. It's a very deep cosmological system. Um, but I've noticed since I've done studying, you know, I, I met him once or twice read all of his books, all of his works, did the drumming, you know, for years and years and found that there is actual truth behind that. That if you're not living in accordance with your element and your peace and your rhythm in life, it's like, a, it's like a salmon going upstream. It's like taking your hand and rubbing it, rubbing it against the grain of the plywood. So we all need to find what our groove is. And to me, facilitators like yourself and myself and the others are leading people to that. It's not this giant rhythmic messiah thing that we're doing. It's just a simple, hey, grab a drum, play a couple of these beats and just find out where it takes you. And I love that that's, that's what we're doing. So thank you so much for the work that you're doing. I mean, I think it's amazing what you're doing. And um, you're in, is it California? I'm in Oregon now. You're in Oregon. Okay, what part of Oregon are you in? Southern. Southern Oregon. So that's like not too far from like Northern California up in that area, right. correct? Yeah, we're okay. like very close to the upper Northern part of California, just over the border. Yeah. I just want to pick up though. I love what you were saying about each person finding their own rhythm and how, when we are in rhythm, how our whole lives can become more easeful. I mean, mm. the pace of modern society might not 
resonate with everybody's internal pace. So that's part of the beauty of, of drumming, like you said. And then the other thing about the elements, it's also part of what we do in sacred drumming and the frame drumming, we're learning the different strokes connected to the mm -hmm. elements, which is a little bit different than the tradition you're speaking of, but it also, it hails from um, the Nubian North African tradition yeah. from Hamza El Din. And it's very much in a sense, correlate to the yogic chakra system. Awesome. So, so, right, we're seeing elements of earth, water, fire, and how we are made up of that and they affect us and then the rhythms and it becomes this alchemy of self-expression and creative uh, potential for people to be in rhythm. So I think it's amazing because you know when you do that and you don't have to be a master drummer because everybody asks when I start teaching them, you know, and I'm sure you get this too, the first thing to say, oh, I don't know how to play. I'm not, I say, if there's a saying in the drum world, if you can say it, you can play it. And I'll have a person, you know, what's your name? My name is Christina. And I'll play that on the drum. And they get a little apprehensive. But once they've warmed up, and I'm sure you see it all the time, it takes them to this place of pure bliss. They feel they've accomplished something. They feel empowered. They feel encouraged. They feel their strength is coming through. So when you play these rhythms of elements in the Dogra cosmology, you're tapping into all five elements. We all are born with one main element, but we have the other four that are embodied with us at the same time. So you can play these rhythms depending on what is needed in life. And I just find it it's such, who would have thought, you know, 40 years ago when I was a 10 year old boy here in Dallas, Texas, learning how to play on pots and pans, that this instrument would be so magical and so transformative and just speak to everybody. And I love the community that we're building. Um, I love what you're doing out in the world. Keep on drumming. I think that should be your motto. <laughs> Keep on drumming. Oh, keep on, drum on. Keep on, drum on. They used to be my thing, drum on. But, you know, real quick, where I got the Do You Speak Drum was, um, I live in a polyglot house. We speak three languages in this house. And I was typing in, you know, do you speak this language and do you speak that language? And it just hit me out of the blue. The drum is a language as well. So I was like, why not call it Do You Speak Drum? And it just, it has stuck and it's, it's going to forever stick. So that's where we are speaking that same language. Yes. And it's so fun when we are in a circle together and we're having a conversation. Sometimes if we're, you know, not following the particular rhythm that we set out to do, and then somebody over here is like expressing herself or himself sure. with a different rhythm. And then we're kind of having this exchange and it's really a way of playing with this idea that universe uh, music is the universal language but especially speaking drum as you say how much it is such a primal um way of expressing and also the fact that we gestate right to bump 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 you know yes, mother's heart yes, so that is so universal another thing that i really loved and appreciated about what you said this idea of really honoring the diversity or the differences like these different cultures that have the drum the frame drum for instance but also like you're saying the djembe or the kunga the bongos dumbek the tombek daf you know daf all these different kinds of drums they also do have some really different cultural uh, traditions around them and it's like wouldn't we want to see those culture cultural uh, traditions just preserved right so that that those differences it's like if you go and eat food it's not just one flavor it's not a monocrop it's not just <laughs> you know at the same store at, in every sure. town it's like and i love that the drum teaches us that i love that it teaches us just the beauty of different cultures and how it is different and if you go to southern italy and you listen to the frame drum it's got a totally different feel than if you go to ukraine they have a little bit of a similarity actually but um if you go to different places in the middle east or if you go up into the scandinavian region they had a traditional frame drum unfortunately their drums were confiscated by different groups of people and put into piles and burned, you know, yeah, hundreds yeah. of years back. But the Scandinavian tradition of drumming also used the beater 
and the southern Italian, you know, they're really getting in these strong, really fiery rhythms. So the differences and then that circle of rhythm that is uniting us all in this great rhythm of all things. Yes, ma'am. We all speak the same language when we're broken down to it. That's what it's all about. Krista, thank you so, so much. I know you have such a busy schedule and I can't thank you enough for jumping on our, our infant platform and then helping this to, to get the word out, letting people know that we're here. Um, at some point, I'll reach out to you. I would love to get together, do a retreat somewhere up there, down here, Bali, wherever you can think of. But I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day and speaking drum with us and just keep doing what you're doing. The world loves what you're doing. So thank you so much. Thank you, Ryan, for this invitation. And yes, I speak drum. And I hope that <laughs> there you go. Continue the conversation through language and through rhythm. And yeah, many blessings on your rhythmic journey. Thank you yes, so much. You do the same. You stay safe and have a good evening. Thank you again.